Hello, we are Team Analogic, and our project was working on an MRI gradient amplifier simulation software. The technical directors who provided their support for us this past year were Phil Hu, a URI alumni, as well as Tim Prouty and Ye Zhao. Team Analogic consisted of myself, Rebecca Pham, who is the ELE capstone designer, and my partner, Louis Ibanez, who is the CPE capstone designer. A little bit about Analogic. They're headquartered in Peabody, Massachusetts, but they have other locations, including the one in Canton, which we frequented. Since 1967, so for over 50 years, they have been in the healthcare and security technology industries, innovating a variety of power solutions. A particular interest of Analogic is the production of radio frequency and gradient amplifiers, the latter of which was directly related to our capstone. To achieve good results for an MRI in high-resolution images, it is necessary to have high power, stability, wide bandwidth, and low noise levels, which gradient amplifiers provide. To operate an MRI, the user specifies a control waveform, and the gradient amplifiers work to provide both the power and signal amplification necessary to the MRI coils, which then generate the desired magnetic fields necessary for the tests. However, with certain input waveforms, the device may exceed operable levels, leading to system failure. There are two such limitations of the gradient amplifier which we are concerned with. The first is when junction temperatures surpass thermal thresholds. This can occur if the input control waveform requires excessive current and the coal plates cannot mitigate the rise in temperature. The other case is when the power demand exceeds what the capacitor banks and power supply can provide. This will result in output waveform distortion and skewed MRI results. In both cases, the outcome can have detrimental effects on the test and disturb the patient. For obvious reasons, this is undesirable. So to minimize this risk, our project was to deliver a user-friendly and accurate software package, which can model the gradient amplifier behavior and inform users of potential system failures before operation runtime. We are glad to say that this anticipated best outcome was achieved. Key features of our software package, which we will expound upon in the following slides, include the electrical and thermal models, advanced simulation design, an intuitive graphical user interface, and finally, a user manual. Looking at the broader implications of the project, it will lead to improved user experience and satisfaction, proactive prevention of any unexpected results or failures, as well as augmented customer loyalty and relations. Ultimately, the bigger picture is that Analogic will be able to provide this software along with their grading amplifiers to ensure customers that the product they'll be putting in hospitals is both safe and reliable. Our project was all software-based. The two main components of the software are the back end, which essentially are the models, and the front end, which consists of the graphical user interface. The first step we took towards the ABO was working on the electrical model. Using LTSPICE, aspects of the electrical behavior, such as the output voltage and the high voltage power supply, were modeled as such. We had to derive mathematical equations and develop the models with them. A major challenge in doing this, though, is that there are many different ways to solve for circuits. Since we're basically trying to achieve SPICE-like results for a few simple circuits, we first looked at how SPICE algorithms run, and then we worked with these methods and created different versions of the models and to how to determine what worked best for our C++ program. In the completed version, we used static time steps, so we applied linear interpolation on the input values to avoid aliasing. And depending on the circuit element we were solving for, we used either the continuous time equations, the discrete time equivalent circuits, or even a DSV filter. Then through testing and debugging, we found which gave the most accurate results. Speaking of results, what you can see here is a comparison of the C++ program values for output voltage against those from the LT SPICE. We also checked that the VBUS values were accurate, and the program does indeed detect expected failures within 10 milliseconds of the LT SPICE. The process of developing the thermal model works similarly. From the circuitry modeling the cold plate temperature and the junction temperature, we put together an algorithm which could compute both values, add them, and then find overall junction temperature. This is a plot of the output of both the C++ program and the LT SPICE, and as you can see, they line up exactly. Putting all of this together, this is a flowchart describing the electrical and thermal models. It outlines the process and how we determine the relevant values and detect potential failures. Since the back end has been covered, I will now pass this on to my partner, Lewis, to talk about his contributions. Moving into the software side of the project, there were several important requirements that we focused on during the development of the application. We needed to ensure that the software was implemented in a way that was modular, so that in the future, 
When Analogic wants to add in simulation capability for other gradient amplifiers in their models, it'll be a simple affair to include in the program based on its overall structure. When integrating the thermal and electrical models into the backend, a challenge we encountered was figuring out how we were going to handle the large file sizes that the software would be taking as an input and writing as outputs. Our initial approach was to perform the simulation by reading and performing computations on one section of the input file at a time. However, this was inefficient due to the high number of openings and writings to the files, so we decided to challenge ourselves to improve the performance by using multithreading. Our new simulation structure still has the reading of the file data, the computation of that data, and then the writing of the results. However, those are all done simultaneously. And in a way, that isolates the thermoelectrical models, meaning that only that part of the code changes when adding in or changing amplifier models. The simulation is designed using three threads of control, created using C++'s standard library for threads to ensure wide compatibility, that each take on a part of the workload. The threads communicate to each other using buffers that act as critical regions, using mutexes to handle the locking of resources and conditional variables to notify each other when any updates are made during a simulation, such as shutdown or a buffer receiving new information. One thread handles the reading and passing of data from the input file. The next handles performing the electrical or thermal model of the greedy amplifier, and the last write the result, writes the results of the computations to an output file. To display the data used by our simulation algorithm, we've created a user-friendly interface that contains all of the components required to run and view the results of simulations ran using the application. You are able to flip through the pages of your file data and switch between input and output data using the intuitive tab system that the Dear I'm GUI library provides. You're even able to zoom in on sections of the data that you would like to look more closely at. The user interface runs using OpenGL, which is already built into Windows meaning that there is no extra installation to run the application. Putting all of the components of our project together, we have achieved our anticipated best outcome and now have a deliverable software package that will be of great use for testing input waveforms that would go into the gradient amplifiers provided by Analogic. To go along with the application, we have also written a simple user manual that details the steps required to run simulations using their input waveform data. We would like to thank our wonderful technical directors, Tim Prouty, Ye Zhao, and Phil Hool, our consulting director, Jeremy Peacock, and of course, our capstone program director, Dr. Harris Junak, for their continued support and assistance in helping us complete this project. Thank you.